Thank you. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about catastrophic geology in the solar system. And before I go too much into it, I want to give you some definitions. Scientists like to make sure everybody's on the same page. So we often have a slide that gives a definition. And in Merriam-Webster, the definition of catastrophic is a momentous, tragic event. Scientists don't like to think about planetary, planetary scientists in general don't like to think about events that happen on the planets as tragic, they're just interesting. So for the purposes of this talk, I'm removing tragic from the definition of catastrophic. Just so everybody knows, the next few slides are not tragic in anybody's mind, so just remove that. In planetary geology, a catastrophic event is an instantaneous geologic perturbation of the planetary surface. By instantaneous, we mean on the level of the age of that body. So for example, humans have about a 78-year lifespan. So winning the lottery, which might happen over the length of a week or so, would be an instantaneous event. It happens very, very quickly compared with that 78 years. Having a baby might happen over a few hours, and that would be an instantaneous event. I'm, you know, obviously, I'm not going to have a baby, have never had a baby, so it, I admit that it probably doesn't feel instantaneous when it happens, but over your lifetime, it's a very short period of time that you go through having that baby. However, recovering from the birth of a child usually takes 18 to 20 years, and that is not an instantaneous event. That takes about a quarter of your life to recover from having that baby. So now let's move into momentous world-changing events in planetary geology. A couple of years ago, everybody saw in the news, uh, the news about the Chelyabinsk meteor that caused a bunch of damage in Russia. That happened over seconds. And on the lifetime of the Earth, which is 4.5 billion years old or so, that is about 10 to the minus 16% of the lifetime of the Earth. So that's a very instantaneous event. A, the carving of the Grand Canyon took place over about 5 million years. On the lifetime of the Earth, that's only about 0.1%. That's an instantaneous event in geology. It may not seem like it to us, but it is instantaneous in planetary geology. The uh, movement of the plates is also a very fast event, but we wouldn't call it instantaneous. You might have noticed up in the very upper left corner these little red dots. Most of them so far have been dots. The one with the recovery from the birth of the child was about a quarter filled with black. The dot here is about 5% of the lifetime of the Earth, which is not an instantaneous event. It's long enough that we wouldn't consider it instantaneous. So now I'm going to take you through catastrophic geology in the solar system. I'll give you a bunch of examples of catastrophic geology, instantaneous geology, and a few examples of non-catastrophic geology so you know how to compare the two. I'm going to start close to the sun and work my way out. So I'll start at Mercury. Mercury was, is mostly covered with impact craters. There's a little bit of volcanism in its past, a little bit of tectonics, but most of what happened is sort of like that Chelyabinsk meteor, only often much, much larger. For example, that yellow, the bright spot in the middle of that picture of Mercury, it was a single impact crater that covered about 10% of the surface of the planet. And what happened to Mercury is very similar to what happens when a drummer strikes a cymbal. The symbol looks solid on the time scale of watching it, you know, you're handling it, feels solid. But if you strike it with a drum stick, it will vibrate very, very wildly. This is a frame capture from a thousand frames per second video of a symbol being struck. And exactly the same sort of thing happened to Mercury when this impact event occurred. The whole planet vibrated. The whole planet had very large amplitude waves travel through it, reflect on the other side, and travel back through. It all happened over a couple of hours, maybe 60 hours, maybe 100 hours, not a whole lot of time. Instantaneous event that completely changed the surface of Mercury. Moving on to 
Venus. Venus, everybody knows Venus has a very, very hot surface, 700 to 900 degrees Fahrenheit, extremely hot, nothing survives on the surface. The reason it has that very hot surface has to do with the atmospheric thickness. It's very, very thick atmosphere. And it, that atmospheric thickness is because the whole surface of Venus overturned over the period of about 50 million years. And the reason it overturned is up in the upper corner, you can see a pot that's been on the stove for too long with a lid on it, and whatever was cooking boiled over. And the same sort of thing happened to the surface of Venus, where the whole surface of Venus was stagnant. It doesn't have plate tectonics like the Earth does. And so it didn't allow the heat that was building up through radioactive decay and from the uh, creation of the planet to escape. And so it, that heat built up closer and closer to the surface until it had to boil over. And because there was no mechanism for it to escape regularly, it all happened very, very quickly, 50 million years, about half a billion years ago. So that was an instantaneous change to the surface of Venus, very, very quickly on a geological time scale, you know, 50 million years. We haven't even been around that long, but for the lifetime, four and a half billion years, it was instantaneous. The formation of the Earth-Moon system. The moon was probably formed through an impact with a Mars-sized or larger other planet that was in the same orbital range as the Earth, and smacked into it, causing both bodies to mostly vaporize and you can see the sequences, they go across from the top and then they start over at the bottom and go across again. And if you can read it, which you probably can't, this all happened over a few hours, tens of hours at most, where the bodies interacted, vaporized, Earth started to recondense into, gravitationally recondense into a single body, whereas the vapor that was surrounding it that eventually made up the moon was just a cloud of, of material debris, mostly vapor. The, the formation of the moon itself from that vapor happened maybe over 10,000 to 100,000 years. There are debates maybe even up to a million years, but even so, it's still an instantaneous event geologically. I'm going to skip the Earth itself and go on to Mars. Mars has the largest volcano in the solar system. It is more than twice the height of our tallest mountain, Hawaii. Everybody's thinking, wait, that's not right. Everest, Everest is the tallest. But Everest is actually shorter than Hawaii. It just stands on a chair, a continental plate, and makes its head higher. In classrooms, I give this talk, and I stand on a chair. There's no chair here for me to stand on. But I always ask them, am I taller? And the answer, of course, is no. My height hasn't changed, just the base level of my feet. And the same thing is true for Hawaii versus Mount Everest. Hawaii is actually the tallest mountain on Earth. Olympus Mons is more than twice as tall from base to peak than Hawaii is, and it covers about the same surface area as Arizona. Gigantic volcano, there are three others on Mars that are about the same size, a little bit smaller. These took maybe a billion years or more to form, so they are not instantaneous events. That's about recovery from the birth of a child for us, a long period of time, a quarter of the life of the solar system. Another wonderful geologic feature that everybody recognizes on Mars is Valles Marineris, the giant canyon system. It's the biggest canyon system in the solar system. If you look, I've placed this map of, of the United States over the canyon system in such a way that Arizona's Grand Canyon would disappear into the small canyon, or the, into a small part of the canyon of Valles Marineris. These two canyons weren't formed in exactly the same way. Uh, the Grand Canyon was formed through erosion. The river carved through the rock. Most likely, the canyon system here was carved, was caused by tectonic uh, uplift and extension. Uh, but it also took a couple of million or billion years to form, so it's probably not an instantaneous event on the lifetime of that planetary body. Moving out all the way to Jupiter, my favorite planet, uh, well, I call it a planet. There's this long debate about what is a planet. Io is a planet to me because I research it, and it's a round body. Don't tell all the people who think that Pluto's not a planet. 
Um, but when we do science, we just talk about it as if it's a planet. Io is the most volcanically active. It's the moon of Jupiter. It's the most volcanically active body in the solar system. Every dark spot you see on Io is an active volcano today. There are more than 400 active volcanoes on the surface of Io. And the entire surface of Io is less than a million years old. That's how active the surface is. And it has completely been erased every million years or less. The surface is completely overridden by volcanism. So this is another instantaneous event. Let's move out to Saturn. Enceladus is a moon of Saturn. And it is volcanically and tectonically active. And there's probably a global ocean beneath the ice surface. Very similar, most people are familiar with Europa, Jupiter's moon, that also probably has a liquid ocean beneath the ice surface. Enceladus does as well. And unlike Europa, it has detected active jetting or volcanism in some people's terminology coming out of the South Pole of Enceladus. And the really, really fun thing about this is that there's a lot of water ice, a lot of other chemicals, but also organic chemicals. And organic chemicals, as far as we understand life, are required for life to exist. Now, they can, the organic chemicals can exist without life, but life itself requires organic chemicals to exist. So there may be life in the subsurface ocean at Enceladus. So this is, we're trying to convince NASA and the funders of NASA to send a spacecraft back to Saturn to investigate Enceladus because it's one of the best places that we can look for life off of the Earth. Moving out further, this image is actually less than a week old. You were some of the first people in the world to get to see this image. Unfortunately, I had to deliver my slide deck two days ago. Yesterday, we got more new images from Pluto, and I would have loved to share that with you because you would have certainly been some of the first people to see the new surface images of Pluto. But Pluto surprised us just, it was amazing. Almost the entire surface is crater-free, which means it's geologically young. It's probably, I don't know what the, 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 year, the number of years that, that, that it has been determined that it's less than, but the geologic surface is completely, almost entirely free of craters. There are a few, but it is geologically young. And we didn't think that it would be. Some people did, and they were correct. Most of us didn't think it would be geologically active because it's so far from the sun, and it doesn't have a whole lot of energy that we know about to drive geologic activity. So I'm coming back to the Earth. I'm talking about the Earth last because it's my favorite planet because I live here, and that helps me do science and learn about the other planets. Um, and we have lots of examples of catastrophic geology in the solar system. And one that you might not think about is life. Life affects the rocks. It affects the atmosphere. It affects everything to do with the Earth. And in 500 million years ago or so, 550 million years ago, there was what we call the Cambrian explosion, which on these slides is that first color barrier uh, transition between the darkest purple, if you can see the purple, to the next color. You can see there were a few species, and then all of a sudden, life exploded onto the Earth. And that changed the geology of the Earth. It changed the makeup of the rocks. It changed the makeup of the atmosphere. And it caused a huge change in the geology. And it happened very, very quickly over less than 10 million years. So that was a instantaneous catastrophic change to the geology of the Earth. Another example is the dinosaur extinction. So I just talked about life exploding. Also, life can be erased. And the dinosaur and other creatures, not just the dinosaurs, about 50% of the life on the Earth was completely extinguished over a very short time period. And there's this big argument in geology about whether it was an impact crater or whether it was volcanism that caused it. And right now, the strongest evidence is that it was actually both. First, the volcanism, there's a huge amount of volcanism in India called the Deccan Traps. And that volcanism happened over a few tens of thousands of years, but it caused enough material to be emitted into the atmosphere that it cooled the surface of the Earth by about 2 degrees Celsius. And then a very large impact hit the Yucatan Peninsula near Mexico, in the Gulf of Mexico and caused a further increase in the darkening of the skies 
and seven degrees or so temperature drop, which just wiped out most cold-blooded animals, wiped out a lot of life, changed the chemistry of the, earth, of the oceans, and et cetera. This happened all very, very quickly. It was a catastrophic change to the geology because, again, life affects the geology of the planet. And now we're living in a catastrophic change to the geology of the planet. We call it the Anthropocene. It's the human geologic age. And we're doing things like the picture on the right, on your, my right, your left, sorry, is uh, the largest copper mine, at least in the United States, I think possibly in the, no, just in the United States, called Bingham uh, Copper Mine. And it is a hole that is larger than Meteor Crater that we dug. There's a little black spot down towards the bottom. There are several little black spots down towards the bottom. Those are trucks that your vehicle that you drive around is smaller than its wheels. And those trucks are moving material out. And it takes longer than that impact crater out at Meteor Crater took to form. But the amount of energy is very similar to moving it. There was some vaporization of the, of the meteor that caused a Meteor Crater. But otherwise, the amount of energy just to move that material is not quite the same, but it's similar. We did that. The picture on, the, on your right is the uh, Amazon rainforest. Forests are typically green when viewed from above. But you see a lot of darker, non-green area. And that is all forest being burned up in order to plant farms and to grow cattle. And we eat that cattle. That's why it's being put there. So in all the smoky area is actually smoke from the forest fires that are deliberately being set in the Amazon rainforest. And these sorts of activities, the, the plot that you see is a temperature and carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere plot. You've probably seen this all over the news lots and lots of times. We are very certain that the temperature is rising, the ter average temperature of the Earth, and we are very certain that it is caused by human activity burning of fossil fuels and deforestation of the Earth. So we are causing catastrophic, this is happening very, very quickly, we are causing catastrophic geological changes to the Earth. This is us. This is the Earth. And what you see here are all of the, there, it's a map of activity, human activity on the Earth. And some people will tell you this is actually the lights that are currently lit at night. It's not really true but it's a, it's a fairly decent representation of the lights of civilization. And you can see we're, we're kind of concentrated in a few areas, but we also have this network of humans that go out and affect the Earth. And in some ways, that's good, right? We have humans living and working together as a society, and we wouldn't have this if we didn't have this large network. And in other ways, it's not so good. Finally, I'm going to end with this. This is the picture from Voyager spacecraft turned around towards the end of its mission and imaged the solar system. And there's a little tiny dot in a bright streak in this image, and that little tiny dot is Earth. And Carl Sagan, I'm not going to try to rep recreate his voice. I can't do it. It's an awesome voice. I wish I had it. But Carl Sagan said, essentially, and I'm going to butcher his quote, this is us. Every single human you have ever known, every single human that has come before you, every single human that will be born in the near future is here on Earth. We can make a go of it, but let's make a go of it. Thank you.